For the wings you'll need two 30 inch sections of arm and wing. I recommend the 5 inch airfoil cord and a 1.5 inch control surface. Here I've manufactured this using the kissing tape technique, the integral hinge, so this makes a very nice smooth airfoil for your motor glider. We'll of course need two of these sections. And what you want to do is cut a one and a half to two inch section here to accommodate your fuselage, assuming you're using the same fuselage recommendations as I'm using. And then install your servo flush with the bottom of the wing. And that's best done starting two inches forward of the hinge and that permits you to place the servo in the wing where it has sufficient thickness to allow it to be completely buried. Putting the servo any further backwards causes it to stick out of the bottom of the wing. Placing the servo any further forward tends to impinge in the spar channel, which you don't want to get into that piece of foam board there. If you're using a carbon aero spar, which is 30 to 32 inches long, it's 15 inches worth of spar in each wing. It's advisable to place your servo in the wing towards the fuselage from the tip of your spar. That is, you'll create a weak spot here in the bottom of the wing, but that is guarded by the spar here. I've never actually had a wing break or wrinkle outside of the end of the spar, but it's common sense to reinforce the weak spot that you've created by your servo. The other consideration is your servo wire. Sometimes it's advisable to have your servo plug protrude from the wing proper itself, if not, be sure you at least install a sufficiently long extension before you actually put the servo in the bottom of your wing. Now if you choose to fix your two wings together permanently, it's as simple as marking the center of your spar for balance, inserting the spar into the channel halfway like that, threading on your other wing like that, and applying tape all the way around, top and bottom of the wing, so you're left with this. Duct tape works fine. I recommend Duck, D-U-C-K brand, to minimize wrinkling in the sun. In this case, I've actually used what's called stucco tape. It's like a vinyl tape, similar to electrical tape, only it's two inches wide. If you want to do a collapsible wing, like this one will fold up into a 30-inch section, it's really quite easy using the same duct tape. You create this hinge, and you'll fold the wing out and then install the spar through the end of the wing. This is good for transport. It makes your wing only 30 inches long instead of 60. Now because you're going to be sliding your spar in and out of these channels, but without actually touching the center section part, it's going to go in the, in the wing tip, it's a good idea to sort of make a little funnel shape at this channel. You can just use a finger or some sort of blunt object just to widen that hole a little bit where the spar is going to continuously go in and out, in and out. That just helps it prevent it from hanging up. Do that on both sides on the center section. It's not necessary to do that on the wing tip. Next, connect your two wings with the spar joiner. It's not important where the spar falls as long as there's enough of it in each wing to align it. And notice that the leading edge is perfectly aligned. This should have been determined in the wing manufacturing to ensure that those will match up. Next step is just to turn that over, and I'm going to put a piece of duct tape across here. Sometimes two just overlapped one on top of the next, and that will form the hinge. I should point out that packing tape is not an acceptable material for the hinge, because as you'll probably notice, packing tape, once it starts tearing, the tear accelerates right through the substance of the tape. Duct tape tends to arrest any tears that begin to occur in it and therefore it makes a, a nice good uh, hinge material. So here's a piece of nice duct tape, five inches long to go from the leading edge to the trailing edge and I've threaded through the servo wires and we'll put this down flat against the bottom of the wings ensuring that these are as tightly together as you can get them for this step. And there is the duct tape hinge in place. Now notice this doesn't really need to be that strong because the spar is inside and that's what will hold it rigid. This piece of tape merely serves to prevent twisting, and it does not take much tape to prevent that twisting. But just for good measure, I usually like to put a second piece of tape directly over the first one 
for a little additional thickness. The next step will be to apply the duct tape around the top and bottom of the wing right through this slot but not crossing the hinge because this application of tape will be specific to each the right and left wing and will not be part of the hinge. It will merely cover up the uh, part of the wing that forms the joint and will further attach the hinge tape to the bottom of the wing. I've made my gap here wide enough to accommodate the fuselage and also to be the width of a roll of tape right up to the junction on the right and the left. To make this step really nice, particularly on the top of the wing, rather than using the roll and struggling with trying to get that to wrap around nicely, I usually cut a piece that's sufficiently long to cover the top and the bottom on each side and then apply it nicely along the top right up to the seam like that so it lays down nice and flat and then you're free to wrap it around the bottom with a lot less stress without having to deal with the roll like that and then smooth that down gradually on both sides. So then the process of breaking down this wing, if you can imagine this spar is on the inside of the wing, equal parts 15 inches on the right, 15 inches on the left, and you'll take your second one and then by approaching from the opposite end, you're pushing that until the place where they meet is directly over your hinge and that way they will come apart at the hinge. You'll notice that on each wing tip, approximately two inches, if you have a 32 inch spar, two inches of it will be sticking out from each end as you go to break it down. So it'll look like this on both ends. And then you'll see that it breaks cleanly in the center. You can usually just leave those spars in place in the wing for transport and then you've got a 30 inch section of wing to transport ready to set back up. The process of setting it up is to reverse. Unfold it like that. Pull one of the spars out. Flip it over and ensuring that your hinge is aligned and straight like this. You can just push that in that first two inches until it's flush and then use your other spar to push that into place all the way down. One other step you might want to consider is covering this adhesive from the hinge with a piece of scotch tape or electrical tape, anything you like, just to cover up the adhesive there so it doesn't get all gummy, grassy, and dirty in there. Finish my wing tips with these uh, winglets that I've cut out of a plastic DVD case like this. You can also use the side of uh, certain milk jugs like this. And it's just a good way to dress the wing tip. By using winglets, you can actually minimize the wingtip vortices that cause drag and also give a little uh, skid on the end of the wing for landings where you don't have landing gear. This will keep the wingtip out of the grass and off the ground from scratching up. Using foam board wingtips like this is perfectly acceptable too, or Depron, whatever you like. And if you do use collapsible wings, be sure that you place a hole and then index that over the spar so that the hole in the winglet will align with the channel in the wing so that you'll actually be able to get the spar in and out. Incidentally, for this type of plastic, which is polyethylene, uh, it tends not to stick very well with hot glue, especially in cool or cold environments, but this two-sided Scotch 3M heavy-duty foam tape seems to work very well, and I just put a strip from about here to the leading edge and then trim off the edges where it overlaps the wing, and then put your winglet right on. Stick it on like that, and that seems to adhere very well at all temperatures.